My name is Kom Kampiranon. I'm the Deputy Dean um, at DPU International College, or DPUIC. Um, before we start the, um, the lecture, may I please ask you to show courtesy by switching off your mobile phone um, so that you do not disturb the presentation. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite Professor Dr. Bun Sam Wiskun, President Emeritus, to give the opening address. Please welcome Professor Dr. Bun Sam. The tourism governor, Tan uh, Vice President, DPU, Tan Phun Sak, Dean, Dr. Harold, colleagues, students, and guests of DPU. And good morning, everyone, and welcome you or to DPU on this rainy day. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to a spe special lecture given by the governor, Kun Surapon Savit Sereni, on topic, how National Tourist Office can stay relevant in today's dynamic tourism industry. Tourism is a major services industry in Thailand with record-breaking arrivals of 20, 24 million tourists with 1.1 trillion baht of revenue. The record to be broken year by year with increment rate of 10%. Indeed, with gloomy economic outlook in Thailand, uh, tourism alone keep the country afloat. Most people may not realize the tremendous task of logistics to move people around, to accommodate, to be fed, and to make sure that the tourists are safe, they are not to be exploited, comfortable, and return home happily so they come back again year by year. <clears throat> um, Kun you must have played important roles in planning and organizing these services. With 30 years, more than 30 years, of experience behind you. To make the level of services to the level of excellence as we witness today. DPU are also grateful to Hun Surupon on other occasions that you did invite DPU to join in, in important initiatives by the Tourism Authority. We learned that you will be retiring soon. With great experience in tourism industry, we hope you could use your experiences and your past records of good offices to continue work for the development of tourism industry. If DPU could be a part of this development, we shall be most happy to participate as a corporate social contribution project of our university. As for today, Kun we are grateful that you accept to be our guest and deliver the lecture on, in this, on these important issues. I shall now declare open of the lecture and invite uh, Kun Surapon on the, on the stage. Please join me in welcoming Kun Surapun. Thank you. Dr. Bun Sam Wiesakun, President Emeritus of DPU, Vice President Pun Sak Panut Norapan, Deans, Rectors, 
faculty members and student of uh, Turkey Bandit University International College. Good morning, a very good morning as the President just had his uh, opening speech, but uh, this, this morning is quite a, a torrentially wet day, but I'm very happy that we have quite a good crown here. So thank you very much for attending, and it is my great pleasure, it is a privilege and honor to be here with you today after you know, a lengthy uh, communication with Dr. Kom. At last, you know, we can make it today. So, Today, I would like to give a special lecture. We call it a special lecture. So nothing better than you know, talking about something that I know best, that is working in the National Tourism Organization, or we call it an NTO. In tourism, there are many you know, sectors that involve the private sector and the public sector. And generally, in the tourism industry, you always have your national tourist office who acts as the uh, public sector who guide or has the role of the driver together with the networking of the whole industry, generally the private investor and the private uh, companies, of course. The topic today is about how NTO can stay relevant in today's dynamic tourism industry. So I will talk about the role and probably along the way, I will try to have some video presentation, some television commercial that have been used over the years. Many of them uh, probably, you know, we started off probably when you were very young or you were toddlers or even some of them, you know, we might, you know, use it as a campaign before even you were born. So we will see, you know, how we can stay relevant and how we develop the way of communication, the strategy of, you know, that is the road of the NTO to really project, you know, the national or the destination uh, images. So that's, uh, so along the way, we'll have, you know, my sidetrack anecdotes, you know, according to my experience. There won't be any academic or technical terms at all because that's the job of your, your professor and your deans and your, your lecturer. I will share my experience. And then, you know, with some interval, I will have these uh, video uh, presentation or some television commercial campaign that we have had. Generally, they were used overseas. So most of us here won't have a chance to look at it much only if you are on CNN or you're on the Fox News or once in a while you're on the, uh, some big spot event that TAT put the television commercial on so that you have the opportunity to see. But our main targets are those, you know, uh, potential clients, potential travelers, potential tourists overseas. So we, it's a good opportunity to share with you those uh, of the you know, commercial that you probably have not much chance to see. And... Uh, it's a way of giving the special lecture so then I won't put you to sleep with my, you know, blah, 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 blah words. And I would be very upset if I see someone fall asleep because, you know, I prepare lots of texts, lots of, you know, uh, uh, PowerPoint. And if you fall asleep, I'll be very upset and disappointed. So, you know. The one sitting to next to each other, you have to look at your friend. If you fall asleep, you know, give him a pat, you know, wake up, wake up, because he won't give much of the lecture anywhere. You know, this is the place that I feel privileged that I, uh, I get excited. You know, I prepare, you see the text, it can go on and on, probably half a day, but I will make it short. Okay, let me provoke your thoughts. TAT has been established 1960, that's about 50 over years ago. And during that time, you know, I'm sure, you know, you won't have an idea. The most important tool and equipment we use to communicate, you know, to work is the typewriter. It's the manual typewriter. And it's the precious equipment that have you ever had. And now we look at today, 50 years back. Who knows about the typewriter, the manual? typewriters. It's the museum piece. 
it's not in use anymore because everyone uses a computer. There's no typewriter. But that's how ch things changed. And if TAT wants or NTO or any business want to stay alive you know, and healthy, you have to be able to change. In TAT, we have few typewriters, of course, but we, you know, it used for decorative purpose. We have flowers and we have you know, some plants growing over it. Just you know, give the respect to the typewriters, but it's not something that we use anymore. It just, you know, what we try to see that things has changed and it's changed dramatically with technology, with the environment, with the social, with the legal, with the politics, whatever change to the business, tourism as well, industry, it's no exception, it's change. So if we want to stay relevant, we have to be able, you know, to keep ourselves awakened and, you know, going with the tide for the changes. Let's give an example, just very recent, Example, Thai tourism generally in the past, we depend very much on the traffic from Europe. They stay long, they got the money, and uh, about 60, 70% of the income coming from the European visitors. One of our, one of the, our oldest, or the, you know, the, the oldest office that we opened overseas, the first one was in New York, second one is in, uh, Frankfurt, the third one is in London, you know, you name it, mostly they are in the European countries, the long haul and medium uh, haul market. And just only very recently afterward, we have in Japan, we have in, uh, in, in, in Singapore, we have more in, in the Asian countries. China came very much later. So what I'm trying to say that, you know, the last few years in Europe, they have a big crisis. Uh, on Eurozone and, you know, our tourists from that area in particular slow down quite a lot. In that change, what are you going to do? The number of rooms that we have available in Thailand is still the same. We can't afford to have less travelers coming in. We can't afford to have the room occupancy rate drop like that because the business people will suffer. So the strategy is how can we really bring in not some other market to fill in that gap. So we focus more you know, on our Asian market, the short haul market. We focus more on the Middle East market where they usually come in during the off season or we call the green season during May, June, July, August, which is the rainy season for us. But the Middle East people, it's the hot day of the year, so they travel. So how do we attract them to come to Thailand and fill our gap of the low season? Okay, we do more Middle East. And then the ocean of course, people in Australia, in New Zealand, they also have a different seasonality and their travel uh, behavior is quite different. So it's something that we try to, you know, uh, shift and stay relevant by getting more emphasis on this short market, Asian market, uh, ocean near and the Middle East. Then the result, uh, we achieved another year of record-breaking performance, even though with the Eurozone uh, crisis, we still uh, record a 22 million mark of arrivals to Thailand in that particular year. And it is the first time that Thailand hit the 20 million mark. So that is something that you know, I, I would like to tell you that it's not that TAT is doing it alone, of course. Uh, but as we are the leader, we are the driver of the industry, we are working together with our networking and our, uh, our partners, uh, mainly the hotels, the tour operators, the airlines. Yeah, they are the major partners that always walk together on the same path uh, with the same goal. In the year that we are having the Euro crisis, uh, the effort that we put more into the uh, neighboring countries and in the regional area, we have seen the increase of, for example, China. We have seen a tremendous increase of Chinese market uh, to Thailand uh, to over two million. In China, I'm talking about last five years that we give a lot of emphasis. And we, we think ahead and we also forecast that this market is going to be very 
important for Thailand. So we start uh, opening our office in China, first one in Beijing, about uh, maybe eight years ago. Eight years ago, and then second, two years later, we opened one more in Shanghai. And then we opened another one in Kunming. And then uh, we do the Chengdu. We just opened Chengdu this year, uh, opening earlier this year. And we have negotiated very hard, negotiated very hard to open our fifth one. And we succeeded. We can open another one uh, in Guangzhou. Guangzhou, in relation to Thailand, is very close. Guangzhou is very close to Hong Kong. And it's the territory that you know, the Chinese government, especially the Chinese uh, National Tourist uh, uh, as, uh, Administration, they protect this area very much, especially uh, any foreign countries or uh, Asian country to open up the, the, the office. If you are going to open up an office in Guangzhou, you have to close one down, you know, as the trade-off. But for TAT, we negotiate with long-standing relationship and the last visit of the Prime Minister, we you know, put the agenda of trying to get to the very policy-making level so that we can open the fifth one without closing any of uh, the other. So we are succeeded. What I'm trying to say is that China, 1.2 billion uh, uh, populations. And if you talk about 10% of well-to-be. I'm sure it will be more than that. We are talking about 120 million people who can afford to travel to Thailand, just like that. And they're spread around with 50 provinces, 30, 30 something provinces all around China. So we have to really have someone to, to do the, the promotion, get them to come to Thailand, get them to know to Thailand, do some marketing and being the anchor office so that our private sector can use us you know, as the coordinator or coordinating center to do their business in China. Okay, after eight years, nine years now, from visitors from China, we are talking about uh, 100, 100, 100,000, a uh, few hundred thousand to half a million, and now we are going to have, uh, last year we have 2.7 million Chinese visiting our country. And uh, probably this year, the protection is, you know, uh, very optimistic. At first, we expect Chinese to be visiting Thailand the whole year 2013, no less than 4 million. So that's the chief. Europe against Asia, economic change, economic change, behavior change, travel pattern change. So we have to do something, we give more emphasis. Okay, the office in Europe, we never drop the importance. We never uh, 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 disregard the importance of European market. It is also still our prime market that we have to maintain. It just only stumble a little bit, it will come back. We are, we are sure, we are quite sure that European is still our very royal market because they stay long much longer than the Asian uh, counterparts. Usually, European will stay for an average of 14 days. So some of them stay for three, uh, one month, one full month, as long as their visa allowed. So they are very much sought after, very much needed clients. The hotel love them. Once they check in and stay for a month, the hotel love them, you know, because you don't have to really do the changing much. It just, you know, they eat, they enjoy lots of facilities and food and beverage, all the outlets in the hotel. And European is very important. But what I'm trying to point out here that, you know, there's a shift, there's a change, and we have to stay relevant. So the Asian market is very important too. Economic-wise, you know, they are very important. We have Japan, 1 million, uh, 1.3 Japanese visiting Thailand every year. We have more than 1.2 million Korean visiting Thailand every year. We have 1.7, if I'm not mistaken, Russian visiting Thailand every year. So there are five or six markets that exceeding 1 million 
uh, 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 total of uh, annual arrivals to Thailand. So that's quite healthy, isn't it? And we have a very promising market like India, for example. India now is hitting the million, one million mark. And they love shopping and they do the weddings. Wedding for Indian is, my, is I'm sharing my experience. If those who are in the hotel business, you will love to have the Indian couples to have their wedding in your hotels because it's go on for six days. And they fly in all their friends from around the world sometime. It's up to, you know, 500 guests, 600 guests. Biggest one occurred in Chiang Mai uh, two years ago, about 2,000 guests from around the world flying in. in. Six days of celebration. Eat, drink, dance, and gift giving every time. When they check out, some of them, you know, check out with a total bill of about 2 million baht. That's the Indian weddings. That's the Indian weddings. Big deal. So TAT should stay relevant, you know. We have been attacking this wedding market for quite a long, long time. So each year we have quite a number of weddings, uh, couples here in Thailand. And may just mention the name of one of the hotel, which you know the, the Indian feel that it's very auspicious to have their wedding there. It's called Rama Garden. They love the name. It's Rama Garden. So they have their wedding. It's, the, the hotel has a very very big uh, ample space, so they can you know put on a lot of things. And it's Thailand can do attitude, you know. And I want you, the young generation, to adapt that can do attitude whatever they ask for can do ka no problem <laughs> i want flowers no, uh, i want flowers i want food i want elephant can do we want the chef three chef from europe from uh, thai and chef from india can do so you know they love to have their weddings here that's indian and also when they travel they spend quite a lot of money they love to buy, you know, if you travel quite a bit, you will see that on the way back, our Indian friends will buy one, uh, what do you call that, that flat screen, uh, flat screen television, because each allowed to bring one in without any taxation. So they'll buy a lot of things. That's a cross-selling as well, not just only in the, you know, in the hospitality and, and tourism sector, but also the cross cross-selling of goods and electrical goods and that kind of thing, flowers and all that. Okay, I go too long about uh, the Indian. Uh, but, you know, I'm saying that you have to be alert to see the, the changes and the differences. And if Indian can afford to travel, they can travel anywhere. And if you are not doing anything, they can go to Malaysia, they can go to Singapore, they can go to anywhere at all because they got money. But TAT, we have to stay a little bit. So we open the office and we give uh, emphasize on doing the annual strategy for Indian market, especially. So we have one in Delhi, we have one in Mumbai. And uh, we, have do quite a, we have done quite a good job. We have won many awards, you know, presented to us by the uh, Indian government and the Indian travel industry. And uh, I've, the role of TAT now, as I mentioned earlier, we are the driver and uh, Tourism is very important uh, industry. Uh, in the bad times that Thailand has facing our economic crisis, it's tourism that help bring back, you know, uh, the the economic situation. And for tourism alone, each year we've made a foreign exchange of over thirty billion U.S. dollars. So it's just one single industry. Because when we talk about export, we talk about rice, we talk about cars, we talk about uh, 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 rubbers, everything combined as the export. But for tourism, we count ourselves as one single industry that builds 30 billion US dollars. So, and talking about the job creation of no less than two million jobs in the tourism and hospitality uh, alone. So that's, that's quite important for our economy. Uh, but anyway, to 
come up from you know, early days to now, that we have over 20 million travelers, it's not the, you know, it's not an, uh, it's not a road that lay with roses. You know, we have problems, we have crisis, we have to change strategy, we face many problems too. Uh, be it uh, the crisis about the, the natural crisis, political crisis, and all, uh, 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 the, the, the disease that, that happened, and that all caused the slowdown or the decrease of the number of tourists too. So TET have to go through the good time and the bad time. Uh, during the bad time when the crisis hit, we have to take an extra roles as the fighter in protecting Thailand's reputation as a tourist destination. This is not an easy job when you talk about, you know, you have to do the, you know, uh, promotion of a country's image because there's many sensitive issues that could happen. And crisis nowadays, it can happen overnight. Uh, you have to be really prepared. During the good times, you have to really prepare too, that you know, uh, some crisis can pop up, not just only in your destination, but if something happened at the other end, it's also caused the problem too. For example, like uh, the big wave in Japan two years ago, once it, it, once it happened in the northeastern part of Japan, it's the Japan that got first hit, but the implication also, you know, vibrate into Thailand too, because the Japanese people stop traveling too. So it's even though we are trying to prepare everything at our home, there are also some other factor that you cannot really control and it could happen at the other end. So you have to really now prepare. And with the new information technology right now, the news can spread around very quickly. So the image you know, can be a very, very sensitive issue to handle. Now with the social media networking, if someone get crazy and they just, as an individual, they went someplace in Thailand and they are not happy with, the, with some people with the services, they can use their social media networking and then it has the you know, multiple effect going around. And uh, it could be an issue that's blown out of proportion as well. So, uh, you know, when during the good time, the bad time, when the bad things happen, you know, the news spread around. So we have to really handle it very carefully. So TAT has have to take another role as the crisis communication agency in tourism. The tourism, uh, the, the crisis management generally will be, you know, taken care of by any relevant or any concerned agency or uh, offices or the ministry, but for the communication you know, in terms of the image, you know, TAT has to get involved because it's very sensitive. People can you know, cancel their flight, they can you know, postpone uh, their, their holiday, something like that, and that's, that's, that affects us very much. So this is the role that TAT has to play. And since, as I mentioned earlier, the crisis can happen anytime, anywhere, and it's very difficult. So to be relevant, we decided that we have a special unit set up as a risk management and crisis communication center within TAT so that we can monitor and we can counter and we can do the recovery program as well. So as if you look at you know the crisis that happened in, uh, in Thailand uh, not very long, years back, just only during the closure of the airport, which is the classic incident and never happened anywhere in the world at all, closure of the international airport <laughs> in December, uh, in, I think at the end of November. Uh, and that's, that, that's the thing affect tourism the most that I can imagine of our history. But we have to really do something. But luckily, you know, we can recover uh, in a very timely fashion. After the 5th of December that the airport has been opened, uh, within 
two weeks. You know, luckily it's during the high season. Uh, you know, the, the tourist traffic just turn around and come back very much to normal by probably uh, the middle of January. But that's the effort that we do together, TAT as the, the core, and then we have the networking of the hotels, of the Thai Hotel Association, of the uh, ATA, or the Association of Travel Association, and so many other. The airlines also join in when we have the crisis. So that's the thing that we are doing to keep ourselves relevant. If you talk about THA, how many members they have? They have over 1,000 1, members. Uh, for the Thai travel agent, they have like 1,200 members. And a very important body is Tourism Council of Thailand. They have more than 200 organizations. So that's quite a large networking that we have to work together, and TAT working as the coordinator, as a core. Now, there are some other business or uh, other function that we, we do as being the NTO too. That is to be the coordinator again for the private sector and our uh, business operators to do that business. We have offices overseas and we also join in many uh, of the trade events. Uh, we bring Thai tourism mission to different markets so that uh, we can go or we can penetrate you know, new market, we can find opportunity, and we can also maintain the existing markets through the promotion activities. And generally, uh, each year we have more than 50 uh, events that TAT will join, and private sector can also participate. The biggest one will be one in, in Berlin called the ITB, uh, International Tourism Börse in Berlin, where you know, the whole world, it's just like an Olympic, the whole world of tourism industry will gather, and we bring you know, roughly about 100, 120 uh, travel operators and hoteliers together with us to uh, stage Thailand and to do some business contract. And the second one is the, in, in London, that is the world travel market. We also bring the same amount of uh, uh, tour operators and uh, business operators from Thailand to join us. Uh, and it's usually in November. So this year we're going to go big too in November. And there are many others that we join in. And apart from the big travel trade, we also join in the consumer fair. We also join in the, uh, uh, we call the road show when we want to penetrate some specific market. And also the roadshow for the niche market. Niche, uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but that's the main, the main task that we have to do. The, the reputation of the country, the image of the country, and also we do the promotion, the trade promotion, uh, for the sake of the uh, uh, travel business, the private sector. And. Uh, Yes, that's something that we promote Thailand to the world. And uh, I won't take this time you know, to tell you that how many beautiful beaches we have, how many historical sites, uh, where the World Heritage are. But you know, we are blessed with so many things. And the most valuable thing in our tourism industry, you know, after, not after, you know, by, research and study and questionnaire, whatever, you know. The most important asset for the Thai tourism industry is the Thai people. So, you know, we are, ve we are very lucky in such a way that Thai people are very hospitable and we have so many things to offer to the tourists. And, uh, okay, working in TAT, you know, myself and our staff take pride in, you know, we are the marketer of one of the best product or one of the best tourism product in the world. And we still believe that uh, to stay relevant, we have to really do everything we can to really get this message out to the world.
Okay. And uh, how we can get the message out to the world, having such a beautiful country, beautiful people. We find out that, you know, uh, buying space, buying time, buying minutes and seconds from television and the big uh, uh, broadcasting is very expensive. The other way that we have been doing together with the private sector quite successfully is using the celebrity. We call it celebrity marketing. Once the big names come to Thailand, we try to make a big deal of it. Okay, like last time uh, President Obama came, we, not we, but okay, it's, it's the Minister of Tourism and Sport and the Prime Minister try to find some time for our big guests to visit the, the major tourist attraction or our, our major place, not the tourist attraction or major place. So Obama went to Wat Po, and what we got was the free publicity worldwide that you know, he visited our beautiful temples and American people, I think nationwide, they, they saw what you know, Obama went to and they want to follow. And there are so many other uh, celebrities like the movie stars. You know, Hugh Grant came here, David Victoria Beckham, Elizabeth Hurley, you know, they love to go to Hoi Hin. We have Nadal, the, the, the number one uh, tennis player, come to Hoi Hin uh, every other year for the New Year celebration. We have uh, Serena William come. We have real Ichikawa, who is you know, the, the, the young, good-looking golfer in, in Japan who is very popular, and he loves Thailand. Those people are the celebrity who came to Thailand and helped us publicize you know, our uh, beautiful country. And also the movie and the film are also a very important channel for promoting Thailand. Did I miss anything that we should show some video yet or not just yet? Not yet, okay. Because I think I talk too much. I want to have something different to alert our audience. But okay, the movie, the film, uh, since 1974, Seven, 1974, how many years ago? That's over 30 years ago. 40 years ago, oh. Now, we, I think the majority of the people in this room weren't born yet. <laughs> 1974, it's a James Bond movie. And it made one of the, you know, a very simple, natural wonders. It's a rock in the middle of the, of the, of the sea very popular, called Kotapu, and it was called James Bond Island. And since 1974, this place, you know, in the old days, nobody wanted to see it because it's just a rock. But one is turned to be the James Bond Island. It's put into the itinerary for every, you know, tourist who coming to Phuket or Panga. They have to go to the James Bond Island too, since 1974. The good thing about it is, you know, they create jobs. Those fishermen usually go for fishing. If it's a bad day, you know, no fish, bad luck. But with the James Bond Island, you know, just come up from the movie. Uh, on the free day, they can take the tourists, go to the James Bond Island. Do you have the picture? Yeah, that one. Okay, and that's come from the movie, purely from the movie. And then there's the, the beach. Uh, the beach, that's, that's more recently, about you know, five, six years ago, where uh, DiCaprio, he filmed, yeah, he starred in, 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 in that, that film called The Beach. And it makes uh, the Almaya in Kirby very famous too. And that's the way of using celebrity and, you know, uh, and uh, that kind of, uh, of marketing. And there are many, many films that have been made here, Hangover 2. The Thai people don't like it very much, but uh, in the America, it's quite a big hit, and lots of people go there and enjoy it. And they look at it as differently because they think that that's the film, that's not the reality. But the Thai people, sometimes they, they think it as an offense, you know, that uh, this movie show bad things about Thailand. But, you know, it's a balance. And uh, The Hangover 2 also features Thailand and make Thailand quite popular. 
or at least you know it's uh, it's it's remind people of the uh, of the the city of Bangkok and some beautiful places in Thailand. But the latest one I would like to give you an example is the 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 Chinese movie called uh, Lost in Thailand. Uh, it's been done last year and it's been uh, it's been shown in in China worldwide it's a record breaking for uh, block, blockbuster it's it's a low budget movie i tell you the, the fact and they have contacted TAT in 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 Shanghai for our support so we give them you know, a very basic support of you know logistic uh, some accommodation and food and uh, some joint uh, uh, joint fund of very little as two million baht. And they made a movie. But the result of this movie made Chiang Mai, you know, a magnet city for, for Chinese people. They want to go to Chiang Mai just because of they saw this comedy and they want to go to Chiang Mai and visit places. And uh, it made a lot of difference. And we saw the number of increase of visitors from China coming to Thailand just because of this movie, substantially, you know, uh, you know uh, and they, people still talk about it. I saw that movie, and I, I think, I don't know any of you have ever seen that movie. Yeah, uh, what, what do you think? Uh, I think you must have some kind of the same background or the same culture or you must have good knowledge of uh, Chinese language to really understand it, enjoy it. For me, it's just fun and very nonsense movie, but you know, it's, it's a big, big, uh, it's a big hit. So lucky us, I mean, you know, we, we invest very little, but you know, the result is quite, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it gives a very good result by, by this movie. So what I'm trying to say is that you know, this kind of thing, you know, to stay relevant, you have to really be able to networking with them or at, le at least knowing what came to play so that you invest a little bit, but you can get a good result. And uh, that way, TAT is trying to stay relevant by you know, uh, uh, keep our eyes open and see the opportunity of new way and channels and new mediums of communications. Okay, now come to campaigns. Uh, to promote tourism, it's the National Tourist Office task. It's the job of the National Tourist Office to really create the, the national campaign so that the, 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 the private sector can follow the path. So we, we just spearheaded that, okay, this year we are going to promote tourism. We are going to make Thailand a visit Thailand year. And that happened in 1980. And we are quite proud to say that we are the very first country to promote tourism campaign by using visit year. Visit Thailand is the first of its kind in the world that we have visited Thailand in 1980 to celebrate His Majesty the King. Uh, and uh, it has been followed by many countries. Visit Malaysia, visit Singapore, visit whatever. There are many of them follow suit. But it's Thailand that was the first, I can assure you, that we are the first one to do the visit Thailand year. And uh, it's quite a successful one and we attract for the first time in 1980 that we have two million visitors to Thailand through that campaign. And it's TAT and the networking of the people in the travel industry to work together, join hands together uh, to do the campaign to make the impact of communicating and marketing and promotion for tourism. And we, with the success of 1980, 1987, we, we repeat the Visit Thailand years once again uh, to celebrate His Majesty's 60th birthday. And it because of that year, we have the year-round celebration. So it made uh, tourism uh, very, uh, very interesting, very exciting. So uh, 
on that particular year also, we record about 24% uh, increase of visitors going to Thailand. Uh, we had 3.4 million visitors that year. And uh, right now, okay, yeah, we have a bit of uh, a change. We show the, the, the commercial that we used for that campaign, but that's the 1987 campaign. Is it? Yeah, is it 1980s? Then? Okay, the what? 1987, 1980, no, show it. Okay, just show it and I'll tell. <laughs> Sorry, I have to have the communication with my staff there because I changed a little bit of what they've prepared. Out here, your neck muscles loosen. Your backache disappears. Your mind is enlightened. The commercial we used in 2000, uh, but we still use the campaign Amazing Thailand, and uh, it's 14 years that we used emotional, emotional communi uh, communications. We turn the robots into humans. That Thailand have all the essence that can make people happy, and bring back life to your robotic life. So that's how we communicate. And this, this thing, I think probably not, not many of you have seen it. But it's a big hit and it's won the first prize for commercial. Okay, that's one thing that we have to do. And this one we have to do with the professional, of course. We have, must have a very good a goose focus, focus group. We must have a very good agency to really you know, get this kind of message out. But that's uh, those days. And now, you know, after 15 years, now people are talking about emotional marketing. You know, not going just to tell what you have, not kind of product, how big the room, but it just tell you how you will fulfill, you know, when you, you know, uh, have the experience of using or seeing or uh, uh, getting our product, that kind of thing that we, we use. And uh, from this on, I would like to say that, okay, that I mentioned earlier, there are, there are lots of crises along the way too. So in time of crisis, the communication also have to change. It will be more not of the promotional campaign, but rather it will be a recovery campaign. Just you know, to bring back the situation or the tourism situation back to normal as soon as possible. So there are quite a number of, uh, of, of things that, that happened. Uh, in 1977, 19, 19, no, 1987, that we 87 that we have the Tom Yam Kung. Can you remember? That was a bad time. But, you know, we, we turned it around, you know, we turned it around that the, the instead of letting it be the, you know, the, the crisis, we turned it into the opportunity. Because uh, during the Tom Yam Kung, it means that, you know, Thai bar has dropped. And, uh, we try to bring in as many as tourists as possible. So we, we use the, we use as the matter of, is, we use the price strategy. 
We say that it's a very good value for money. We, we say that it's, Thailand is not it's an inexpensive uh, 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 place to visit. So we, we also launched uh, the campaign uh, to attract tourists coming to our country during that hard time too. And uh, 19, oh yeah, it's 1998, 1997, 1998 that we had the Tom Yam Kung. And we, we launched the Amazing Thailand uh, campaign and it was an overnight uh, hit. And it, after that, after, the, uh, after our campaign of Amazing Thailand uh, and our success, there are many countries who are our competitors, like Singapore, Malaysia, or even India. They also come up with that kind of similar uh, campaign. So we'll see during those days, there will be uh, in incredible India as a matter of fact, has been created and launched after you know, uh, a year or two, about two or three years after Amazing Thailand. And uh, India used uh, Incredible India until now. Just the same like uh, Thailand, we still use Amazing Thailand because it's been well received and uh, it leaves a very good impression and it's also a reflection of our brand. Uh, uniqueness. So we still use uh, uh, Amazing Thailand to this day. It, we only change, we keep Amazing Thailand like, you know, like a brand for tourism industry. But to keep, to stay relevant, Amazing Thailand stay, but we always change the tagline to stay relevant with the different situation. Uh, this year we also keep Amazing Thailand but we might change our tagline. The tagline that we used last year was Amazing Thailand always amazes you. But uh, probably this year it's about time that we change the tagline, but Amazing Thailand will stay. Uh, <clears throat> and that's also the task of the TAT and the National Tourist Office to really find the campaign, the tagline, something that represents the brand but still keep it sharp. You, know, you can stay the same for a long, long time, but you cannot keep changing it all the time too because the consumer will get confused. And also the people in the street just cannot follow you. And it's very costly too if you change the campaign every year. The one who is going to be happy is the ad agency. You know, because <laughs> they are to get the money and you know, all the production and all that. They would, they would love to come to you and say, oh, the campaign is now getting rusty, you need to change. Every time that we change it at the agency, it will come up in your code, you have to change the campaign. But we have to be, you know, we have to be, to be realistic because sometimes doing the promotion overseas, we are talking about you know, how many markets, we have 47 markets all around the, the world that we have to communicate. Sometime one year or two years, you just not complete your task of communicating or let them know, you know by using the blanket communication medium. But you, it takes years and years before people really get to understand and buy your campaign and buy your, your brand identity. But if you keep on changing, it's just gonna cost you more and more, especially the destination brand. I think for myself, I think it, if it's a successful one, stay with it until it's broken. If it's not broken, don't fix it, but just refurbish it and make it refresh. That will be fine and it's less costly. And uh, generally, it have a more effective communication uh, result. Crisis management, I've talked already, setbacks uh, uh, in many years that we have to have the crisis communication center. 2006, uh, we have another good year by commemorating the His Majesty the King Pumi uh, accession to the throne uh, as the longest uh, ranking monarchy. So we have another campaign just to refresh the amazing Thailand. We call that campaign the Grand Invitation. And that year I remember we promote a lot about the very auspicious uh, uh, occasion that the people can join in, that is the Royal Barge Procession. Uh, and it was one of the best year for communication and make Thailand world to the world, uh, make Thailand known to the world with that very, very special 
and a very unique uh, royal barge procession and the campaign of uh, the grand invitation. Do you have anything with this? No. Okay, 2008, we have another big celebration year and uh, we share the news of the king's 80th birthday and that year there were all the monarchy around the world come to visit Thailand. It's all the big celebrity come to Thailand and that make a very big news and also reflect on the publicity and the awareness of the people. And it helps a lot when people come to decision making. When you do the communication and it has been disseminated at the right time, it affects a lot about the people when they are going to make decision. Malaysia, Thailand, Malaysia, Thailand, and once you know, Thailand coming you know, uh, with something very positive, it makes them, it make it a lot easier to decide. But right now we have to be cautioned that a lot of countries now doing a lot of marketing communications. Malaysia spend heaps of money, you know, and I think no less than five times, six times more than Thailand to communicate. And if you're sitting in your, in your living room watching television, whatever, you know, AXN or the, 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 any international or CNN, you see Malaysia uh, truly Asia and the sound of the the music and the percussion is right now you know implanted into your your back of your mind because they, they communicate all the time and that's very effective uh, but they can do that because they they have got good budget but what I'm trying to say is that uh, the competition is very high now even now right now you see the commercial and the promotion by Indonesia who is doing a lot of promotion now. Philippines has been very quiet for a long time. Now Philippines step up their communications, step up their marketing communication and their promotion too. They want people to visit their, their country. Even Japan, after the big waves, Japanese realized the importance of bringing back their economy through tourism. In the old days, Japanese don't care much about you know, inbound tourists they care more about their domestic. And also, they even think of, if the Japanese travel abroad, the more travel abroad, uh, it saves the resources in the country. So they have the campaign of 20 million uh, visitor from Japan going out of the country, which is the opposite direction. But once the big wave come, they, they, they do a lot of promotion, and every prefecture, prefecture is just like province. They have their own government or something like that. They go out for promotion to, to attract tourists coming to Japan. And many of them, many prefectures come to Thailand and try to work uh, with our travel agency, tour operators, outbound operators to you know, send out the outbound uh, groups to, to Japan. So the competition is, is very strong now. And in the landscape of these uh, communication platform, it's, it's very, very fierce. United States, they used to stop uh, their section in the commercial, Ministry of Commercial, Ministry of Commerce, something like that, uh, the tourism sector. But now after Obama, they re reopened that office. And Obama even talked about promoting tourism to the United States, which is the very first time I've ever heard the United States talking about that. Other than that, they just, you know, doing their own uh, state by state, state to state promotion of tourism and, uh, and, and, and convention. But right now, they speak a very clear message about, you know, promoting tourism to the U.S., for example. And forget about U.K., Italy, France, they're also very strong about tourism promotion. Uh, I have another TV commercial, just for a break. Uh, this is after uh, the year that we celebrate our 50th anniversary of the establishment of the Tourism Authority of Thailand. So the question is, after 50 years, what's next? Very difficult question to answer. But we feel that amazing Thailand is eternal. <laughs> I mean, 
Thailand as a tourist destination will be gone for and forever. So our tagline, just to be relevant uh, to our, you know, auspicious uh, year of celebration of 50 years, and we are going to look forward to another 50 years ahead. So what we say is, amazing Thailand, what? Amazing Thailand always amazes you. We make it simple like that. So we put a commercial of Thailand always amazes you, right? So we show you the video right now. Just as amazing as you remember. Amazing Thailand always amazes you. Yeah, that's uh, the commercial we launched. We launched yeah, in uh, 2010, 2011 during that time. And we used Thailand always amazes you just to, to stay uh, true to our uh, our tourism assets, you know, that we have the culture, we have the people. It's not just only that some country has to do because they lack of all of these resources, so they have to come up with the man-made. But you have to accept the fact that you know, the man-made is also important. But somehow, the investment of the man-made attractions in Thailand is not that uh, strong. But anyway, with that, to stay, you know, that we can stay competitive, we have to really focus on what we are now having. But I still long for any new man-made kind of attraction as well, something that combined with, you know, with technology, that I think it is very important that we have to think right now, because once the AEC started the free flow of the traffic. If we have more than of what we have, which you know, most of them are look quite similar to each other, we must have probably something a little bit unique and different so that we can attract this, you know, this very lucrative traffic of tourism flow that's going to happen in 2015. Okay, but anywhere it always amazes you that we have what we have. And still, what we have still be able to amaze all of our city coming to Thailand. And what always amazes you is also our people. It's the message that we try to get across when we do the campaign. Okay, then as I mentioned earlier, uh, there are so many challenges. Uh, we have to fight uh, many crises, political crises, uh, since the military coup in 1992, we have the riot 2010, closure of the airport 2008, we have tsunami in 2004, uh, that make also a very big impact on our tourism. And uh, also the latest one that we have been working very hard with the communications is the 2011 flood which uh, I think I would like to share my experience of the flood in 2011. We cannot deny that the 2011 flood is one of the biggest devastating uh, 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 natural disaster that happened to our country, mainly to the industry, production industry, the industrial uh, estates. And, uh, but for tourism, as a matter of fact, do you know that only less than 5% less than 5% of the flooded area were 
the tourism attractions. So it's it's the 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 fact that we have to really communicate that you know not all Thailand is flooded. You can still come to Phuket. You still come to Chiang Mai. You can go to Isan. Hua Hin is okay. It's just only part of Bangkok and only some part, very few, very small area of Ayutthaya that affected. So during that time, we have to work very hard. But the the communications and the message that most of the people worldwide know about Thailand is that it's everybody is like up here. You just cannot really come to Thailand. And the most, you know, most. I would not say effective, but most destructive picture, one single picture that affected Thailand tourism the most is one that been taken by our internet uh, English newspaper, showing the Thai Thai aircraft, you know, parking with you know about a foot high flood, and as a matter of fact, that plane is under the what do you call re repair. And it's been on the front page, and this has been disseminated all over the world. And this is the task for people in the tourism industry to really tell them that no, the the airport is operating as usual, and the picture is was taken in Don Mueang. So during that time, you know, uh, August, it was August, it was September, October. November during that time that you know the news gets get around, and one of the very big uh, news agency they have their representative or their reporter anywhere with the high flood they will go there, and then report and make you know the issue even worse. But for tourism, it's about five percent, and we have to do quite a lot for the recovery. Uh, that's just an example that you know something when the communication if you cannot do the counter communication it's going to be very difficult and the recovery won't take the recovery will take a much longer time and the damage will be you know a lot more you, you think of the operation of the hotels you know if they have to stop for say 30 days the staff the food you know everything is going to be damaged. Uh, the airline that's to have to fly every day, and if they have to stop all flying with the with the empty plane for the plane, I mean the the airline industry. I think only seven days. I think they can went bankrupt. They can go went bankrupt with with this kind of uh, 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 disruption. So there are many things that we have to do, but okay, I stress that we are not doing alone, but we are the coordinator doing with the networking. And I think uh, I have this opportunity. I have to say that in the travel industry, the, the academic, the universities, uh, also playing a very important role, and it's going to be even more important uh, in terms of, you know, because I say, that one of the strongest asset of Thai tourism industry is the people. And the people must be trained. People must be understanding whether you are going to be in the promotion, you in the services, whatever. You know, right now the competition is very high and you have to be very knowledgeable. And at the moment I think we need more and more new uh, generation to get into our tourism industry. So I think even in the good time or the bad time, I'm thinking of in the bad time, if we have networking with the university, which you also have, you know, uh, the experts in, in different uh, area, plus the expert in communications and, and, and so on, we can also, you know, work together for the sake of the national uh, tourism industry too. So I think uh, it is very important, and you are sitting in this room, you can play a very important role for the very important industry of the country. And we are not talking in the future, if the AAC is opening up, it's not, we are not talking about 30 billion US dollars anymore, probably it's double that. And we're going to need a lot more of the expert uh, skill, uh, uh, manpower into this uh, industry. And talking about the growth, you, you, can you imagine, we first have the office of the 
NTO, the National Truth Office, in 1960. Uh, that year, 12 months of that year, 1960, can you imagine how many foreigners visited Thailand? How many foreigners visited Thailand? The whole year. Very close, yes. 84,000 or 81, 82,000 visitors coming to Thailand, and it's a big deal. Oh, we have 82,000 visitors year-round coming to Thailand. But if you imagine right now, 82,000 people, it's just one lot of people sitting in the Manchester United Stadium for the one match. <laughs> but we are very proud that we have 81,000, 84,000 visitors in, 2000, in 1960. But after 50 years, now we are welcoming 22 million. And this year, if things do not go wrong, we should have no less than 24 million visitors from overseas, not the Thai people. But the domestic travel, I might be a little bit, uh, I, I, I talk too little about the domestic, but I will talk about it later on, but it's very important. Domestic travel is very important in, in the whole picture of the tourism industry. If I put an example of China, if I put an example of United States, if I use an example of Japan, that tourism industry is very strong, but 80% coming from the domestic travel alone. For China right now, all, all the, no, it's all Chinese within China. And they are building the new places, man-made attractions. They restore the old historical sites. And they are doing the infrastructure, in infrastructure about tourism. They invest a lot in tourism. And they make the money you know, disseminate and going around within the country, making the multiple effect through tourism by spending from you know, different provinces. Japan also. You have to accept that everything in Japan is immaculate. The investment infrastructure and the tourist infrastructure. And you won't see many visitors coming from overseas to Japan. It's just only their domestic. And in U.S., that's very clear, very much of the domestic. But for the U.S., it's now the, the international tourist is coming up very, very, very high. Like the big cities like New York, now they rank number five for visit, uh, the most visited uh, city in the world. But the billing or the money they get is number two, meaning that you know, each, everyone spend more while they are in New York, even though the number is number five, but the, the spend is number two. But domestic is very important. But anyhow, for our visitor this year, we are going to have 24 million, uh, if not more, and our domestic travelers will be 1.7 million trips made by the Thai people. We call it a trip because sometimes we travel five times a year, something like that. So domestic is very important. And uh, TAT has to do both domestic and international alongside because uh, they are all contribute to the strength and the the health of the tourism industry as a whole. And out of these 24, uh, 24 million peop, uh, visitors, the first eight months of this year, we have already received 17.4. Uh, we have already uh, attracted 17.4 for the first eight months, so we have only seven million more people to attract for the rest of the year. And we, we believe that if there's nothing very big happen, keep my finger crossed, what is happening in Arupong right now, uh, thousands of people gathered and it seems that the number is increasing. Uh, I'm not very happy uh, as the tourism director, so I'm not very happy, uh, put politics aside because uh, it's our, our high season is coming. And if something happened, uh, then our target of 24 million might be short. But okay, never mind. 
uh, let's keep the finger crossed that everything went through quite well and we do the crisis communication effectively. So we have 24. The source market, biggest source market, of course, first China. Second one is Malaysia, our neighboring countries, and uh, Japan, Korea, India, and Russia. These are all the markets that generated more than 1 million visitors to Thailand each year. China, we expect to receive them about um, 3 million, 3.5 million this year. Japanese has recovered very well. Uh, I think this year we'll, we are going to have more than 1.4 million Japanese coming to Thailand. And the uh, reason why these four markets are very, very important and quite large in terms of volumes is because of our study clearly shown that destination, um, I mean, the source market and the destination, if it's, they are within the six hours flight, uh, it's probably the most, uh, probably the best access. The accessibility is the best. So we can see that, you know, uh, China, Malaysia, Japan, Korea, India, is about six hour proximity. And uh, luckily that Thailand, geographically, we are quite in the very uh, aviation hub. Uh, be it from the you know, uh, in the east in in the Asian region, and also we are not very far from 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 the Middle East, and also from the long haul market like Europe. And right now there's a change, and we have to stay relevant again in TAT in terms of doing marketing and uh, and business opportunity. Now. And you might, might notice that, uh, okay, here's Europe, here's Asia where Thailand located. Halfway is the Middle East. What the Middle East now is doing that they are stepping up in the aviation business, in the aviation industry. Emirates, they have the Emirates Airline. Uh, Abu Dhabi, they have the Etihad. Uh, there are a few more, Qatar Airline. They all step up, beautiful craft, big fleet, newest, you know, 380, they have numbers of them. And the traffic is not Middle East, Europe. They are making themselves as the connecting point. So right now, there are a lot of European visitors coming to Thailand or Asia by using these, kind, these uh, airlines, Emirates, Etihad, Qatar Airlines, uh, and few more of the, of the Middle East airline. And their network is very, very broad. They go to not the main city, but also the secondary cities as well. And that's the only connecting point in the Middle East, and then you can come directly to, even to Phuket or to Bangkok or to Chiang Mai directly from there. So that's, that's the new thing. But you know, the six-hour proximity is still you know, the, the most convenient. And we find that most of the tourists, the big market coming from that area. And uh, our marketing plan for 2014, you know, after that, we, 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 we are quite sure that we are going to hit the 24 million mark. 1914, we have already laid our plan for next year, and we, we project that we will have probably 28 million visitors coming to Thailand in that year. And we are trying to change the name of the game. We are going to change the game plan. As I have the opportunity to talk with uh, uh, some of the executives at the universities, we agree upon one thing, the direction we have to change. It's not a number game. I, I'm telling you that, okay, 81,000 now to 20 million, 20 million to 24 million, and it's going to be 28 million. How long this number game will go on and on? We have to think about it that, you know, the more the number, probably it's not the, it's, it's, it should be the quality, not the quantity that we are focusing on. So the strategy of the marketing in the next few years, uh, we started a few years back already that we are going to change the structure 
of the we have to change the 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 marketing or the business structure uh in the past forty five percent mass leisure meaning those who come in the package cheap package not very expensive package forty five percent in the middle twenty seven percent and a very high end fourteen percent how we can go to change you know, the the combination of this structure i mean we need to do more about the medium end and the high end we have to really make the the 14 percent of the high yield bigger probably to 15 percent 17 percent to 20 percent and also the medium one, which is very important to, we have to really expand that uh, market to the larger size. And let alone, you know, the, 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 the leisure mass, it somehow has a very strong base. And it needs very little assistance in terms of promotion. But we have to really put our effort with our re very limited resources to promoting the medium market, middle end market, and the high end market. And that's our next strategy. We have to also narrow the gap of the first time visitor and the repeat visitor. Now we have 60% repeaters and we have 40% first timer. And we wanted to grow together. Not that the repeater is getting larger and the first time smaller. And we don't, if you don't have the first time uh, visitor, you won't have the repeaters anyway. And, 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 and the market base won't increase. So we have to attract more people from the new destination, from the new city, from the secondary, uh, secondary towns where there are no direct flight. But we have to encourage, for example, for a start, we might have to work with the, uh, the charter flight to at least you know, get accessibility for those first comer who would like to come to Thailand but they don't have access or they don't know about our country that much so that we can increase the ratio of the first time we to our country as well as the repeater. It's the story of success if you have good repeaters of course but it means that they come and they love it they come. Anyhow uh, for us we still need to attract more the first time visitors so that we can expand the client base to a larger uh, base of medium and the, the high-end uh, market. That is our strategy. And uh, we would like to also distribute more tourist traffic, not just to only some certain uh, major destination within the countries. According to our marketing research, there's only 11 destinations in Thailand, or provinces or destination, whatever you call it that uh, receive more than 500,000 foreign visitors. So it means that we are still limited, you know, the concentration of the visitor coming in only 11 destination, but we have far more than that. You know, our 76, 77 provinces, they can also benefit from tourism too. And if you're looking for the long term, Visitors who have repeatedly come to Thailand for two, three, four, five, six times, they want also going to some new places. They want, just don't want to go to Pattaya, Phuket, Chiang Mai, Bangkok, Hua Hin, Phuket, and all that. But they are talking about you know, prayer. They talk about Nan. They talk about Surin. They talk about Ubon Rajatani. You know, they talk about Mehong So and all different places that we can also make use and make the tourism more beneficial to the country at large. So we also want to spread around the tourist traffic into these lesser known places uh, so that there will be a balance. And also it will decrease you know, the wear and tear. You know, the, what do you call, when, when people get into one place, too many of them, it's the environment, it's the social problem, it's the traffic, it's all that, you know, uh, impact that, 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 you know, got on top of the environment and the well-being of the locals, people too. 
Uh, if you can spread them around, you know, it's just a, a good strategy, but it takes time. Anyway, what we started now, that once we are looking for the quality and we are going to look for the balance of the first time visit and the repeater, and we have the product you know, to, to suit our strategy, that's what the way we are going to. Asia South Pacific market will be you know, the prime uh, uh, focus for us to increase the number of revenue for the first time visitor because the change of economy, change of behavior, as I mentioned. Those who never traveled before, now they can afford. And generally in the Asian Pacific area, when they do the first visit, they generally pick the country which is not very far from your homeland and not too much different in the term of culture. So for Thailand, we are fit for those uh, new riches from China, new riches from Indonesia, the new riches in Vietnam, for example. They are loaded with money. They want to go, but their first visit, they don't want to go too far. So Thailand is the best choice. And that's also the strategy that we are going to do. ASEAN, big deal, big things. AEC, 19 million people, six, something like that. But we, we talked about the cream and the, 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 those who are well to be, the wealthy one. We are talking about many, uh, many, uh, many uh, hundred million people who can afford the travel. And uh, also we are trying to attract our neighboring countries to visit ASEAN. And at the same time, we are doing the double role of promoting ASEAN as the whole region so that we can the we have, can have the foreign visitors from uh, Europe, from, from the state, from the Asia, uh, from the Pacific, whatever, to come to ASEAN as the whole region. And also we uh, promote ASEAN as our own visitor. We call it ASEAN for ASEAN and ASEAN for the world. And ASEAN for ASEAN, right now we have an, our office in ASEAN countries. Or the first one was in Singapore, second, oh no, first one in Malaysia, second one in Singapore. Now we have the third one in, in Vietnam, fourth one in Indonesia. So we have our office to do our marketing, uh, hoping that you know, the traffic in this area is getting more and more important. Going very quickly, European market. Still, we are foc focusing on the prime or quality market from, from Europe, uh, the medium market. Uh, and also the first time visitors from the new or the secondary city are coming from that area. And the second, we are sharing a medium and large market from Italy and Spain, Scandinavia, UK, Middle East, will be the prime market that we are trying to uh, do some more promotion. We put the Middle East, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's the connecting point. And the price and the service of the airline is very good. We have to work with not only Thai Airways International to promote tourism. Now, with the airlines, very fierce competition. The airline, now Thai Airways, we can still compete with, I would say, not the aircraft. It's not a technology, but it's, it's the people, it's the service on, the, on board. But right now, the competition for airline is very, very, very fierce. We see those Etihad, we see the Emirates, we see the uh, Qatar airline, whatever. They, they have the, the most, the modern, the, the nicest aircraft. And they spend money in terms of the seating, the entertainment, everything in there. It's just so convenient. Okay, my experience, lucky enough, to travel first class sometimes. I travel first class 380 of uh, Lufthansa. And then you travel first class of Emirates. You travel first class 380 of Thai Airways International. For the facilities, Thai Airways the last. Facilities, Emirates the best. Efficiency, go to Lufthansa and conveniences. So, now, the craft is something that if you have money, you can do. But Thai Airways is still best with you know, the software. That's the, the people. But mind you, in the future, this airline, they know the, their weak spots. 
So the Turkish, uh, no, okay, the, the Emirates, they hire Asian, uh, Asian astronauts who can give you the services, you know, just they have many Thai, many Thai uh, students or the, 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 the crew member are from Thailand. So they can close the gap of their weaknesses of the software. Hardware, no problem, they got money. And also they have a very good connection and the flight time frequency. So whatever the airline is convenient to come to Thailand, TAT will work with them to stay relevant. But also we give priority to our national airline because we can go with very strong image. Now going with the same uh, uh, goal. One airline that has improved quite a lot and very aggressive is Turkish airline, as far as my experience concerned. They have the best. Nobody think much about this, but to really capture, you know, the the, the customer satisfaction. Turkish airline, they invest a lot on their lounge. The lounge of Turkish Airlines, I think I have never seen anything like that. It's so convenient. It's just like a community mall, so to speak. It's not, not the lounge. You have, you know, if you have, if you are the traveler with the kids, there's this big space, big, big area that, you know, the family can stay with the kids. They have the playpen. They have kid painting, do whatever the kid would like to do. One, one, one side. And if you're going with, uh, with your loved ones, you want to have a very cozy place to sit with your, your, your wife, your girlfriend, boyfriend. They also have a special lounge with a different kind of music. And you are the music, uh, if you are the music goer, they have the theater, the theater of about 30 seats with the popcorn free of charge. And the, and, 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 and the movie, you know, run on loop, you know, new movie too. So it's something that, okay, you will remember. I visited there only once and I remember that Turkish airline lounge is the best. So that's something that competition is coming up too. Okay, I went sidetracked now, where are we? Okay, and we do the communication, that's I talked earlier, public relations. Now, uh, Okay, skip that very traditional ones that we have to do anyway. You know, commercial, TV commercial, we have to have to do the print ads. But things has changed, the message has changed. Uh, now the ads, in the printed ad, you, know, you just cannot do the ads as you do in the old days with the very big logo of Thailand and then a lots of long copy. Copy is the word that you put into your ads. That Thailand is a beautiful country, historical. We have long history. Come and meet our people. Who's going to read that? And my question, who's going to read that? They know it's the ad and with a long story and long copies. And you spend a lot of money for the copy writers. Nobody read it. But now it's the ad. Is, you, know, you have to really very eye-catching. It might be more expensive, but eye-catching and very creative. So it, it makes your ad as if it's the part of the magazine of, of that printed ad. So that's, that's something that we have to keep up to stay relevant to. But that's too detailed. I won't go into that. We have more of the, let's take a break. Oh, that's, uh, okay, something as an example of that. Uh, in TV commercial, sometimes you use the talent that you can hire them. It's Mr. John, Mr. Thomas, who walking on the street, and then he acts into your into your commercial. But sometimes you have to spend a little bit more. And now many uh, commercial products and also the destination they use is the celebrity. So we use our own celebrity, which is not very much popular in Thailand, but he's very popular in 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 Japan and in Korea. Uh, he's a very, he's a Thai guy, uh, Nichikun. So we use Nichikun to promote our campaign for the Asian market. Asian market, we want them to think of Thailand as the holiday break. It's just like a weekend destination. So we use the campaign, let's take a break. And by use Nichikun 
as you know, the, as the presenter. We have that, right? Okay, we show a little bit of Nichikun. I don't know how he looks now, but I think he's very handsome boy. Yeah. You know, he, he's good looking, heart throbbing now. Nah. The, the, the lady is my like him. Let's take a break. Come to Thailand. Let's take a break. So that's Nich Kun, nah? and he is very kind enough to work for his country. Anyway, I think we we spend a little bit of money, not as high as we have to pay the general celebrity. And he's very Thai. He speaks fluent Thai, but he's very good in Korean too. He's a very smart guy. And the story is that you know he went with his friend for an audition somewhere in. I cannot remember for Korea. He went with his friend. He accommodated his friend. His friend, he was not, his friend was not chosen. But he was the one who was chosen to be the, 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 the star. And, and now he's working with a band, boy band, something like that. Korea has, how many boy bands Korea has? A lot. Okay, good, good answer. <laughs> I cannot remember, and each boy band they have fifteen or sometimes up to up to fifteen, right? In in one boy band, they dance and they sing, and they all all good looking. I don't know why they are so good looking, and so many good looking boys and girls in Korea. How do they do that? Good question. A uh, good answer. <laughs> and who made a uh, and, and who made a trip to Korea already? Not yet. Okay, go there. Why not? Yeah, but but I admire I admire Korea. I admire Korea for their very very effective marketing in every way, in business, in tourism, in very well planned and determination to do things the right way, and they are successful. I only hope that we can do the same thing as Korea do, as Korea does, and have some kind of agency that you know. Agency mean uh, minister or ministerial or the or the the public sector that can work very effectively like Korea, so that you know because we have a much better resources and better assets, and we can be even more successful and you know, but okay anyway that's that niche kun story, and we also have the the hard trap of the golf. Uh, golf sports in, in Japan. Uh, his name is Ryo Ichikawa. He also, we use the networking, we don't pay him much money at all, but use the networking and uh, invite him to Thailand and then ask him to be the ambassador for the golf industry. Golf is the big thing in Thailand right now, about 4% uh, of the people visiting Thailand going for golf and it's generating quite a huge uh, uh, amount of money in golf alone, so it's one of the very big uh, uh, niche market for Thailand. And of course, Lost in Thailand. I talked a little bit about that. The movie, like the Butch uh, the Bachelor, and all those, all the beautiful, you know, handsome guys. And also, I would like to take. I think the time is running out now. Uh, I still have probably. A lot to go, but I will cut short. I will come with okay the the new channel of your generations that of course TAT to stay relevant. We have to go online, of course, and the landscape you know, of that has changed a lot. Less expensive, more effective, and it's the two-way communications. And as right now we are going to the 3.0 marketing. Uh, uh, generation. I think it's a value-centric, not just product-centric and consumer-centric anymore. We have to really be able to really communicate effectively so that we can really touch that emotion and making the value visible. So I think uh, not just only that traditional communication uh, anymore that can do all the job for you, but it's now, it's the online, it's social media networking. 
And uh, yeah, I still see someone still, you know, you're always online, you're always on Facebook. Now, line probably is the most popular thing for the kids. Uh, yeah, are you online? Ding ding. <laughs> ding ding. Line. Ha ha hee hee. Send the stickers, <laughs> all that. Okay. But you can keep communicating all the time. But we are doing it. Even the commercial now, we are have to do it in the f different format. Not the one, uh, not a 60 second, 30 second, 45 second television commercial. But we are doing a three minutes, six minute episode. We call it a web episode and put it on a YouTube. You know, and it is, and it stay there and people get engaged. And you can see how many people view, three million, four million, and the big hit can be like, you know, 35 million, 65 million, 300 million people. And that kind of communication is also very good. I would like to take some time. Can we skip to the, the YouTube one that we have uh, on the Hearing the Sunshine? It's the, the episode that TAT used, and we have you know, many million hits. And it's communicating in a way of more emotional way. Why, whereby you cannot do it through the, the commercial of one minute, two minutes. And three minutes commercial, you cannot call it commercial. It's like a vignette and it's cost you fortune, you cannot do it. But through this medium, uh, through the internet, we can really connect, get connected to our uh, consumer too. mystery. I can hear the wilderness. I can hear the past. I didn't get it, sorry. He said, bye, chance, bye. My bad light, it's me. It's okay, don't worry. And I can hear her. Hey, hey, hey! My bad light, my bad light. My blue, my blue. My, my blue. I didn't order this. Uh, my bad light. Sometimes the tone and the tempo of the sound can create its own meaning. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. Recording can keep the moment. Ishoni Sugosta Shiaz and Ashtokyo, Utagani, Opoi, the Ravi Deva. Gentlemen, I would like to end my presentation here as long as you have a, you know, in a good and high mood. And that's a beautiful uh, webisode. And if you get into your YouTube and you, you know, 
you find uh, the hearing the sunshine there are about four or five episodes of this a very lovely little you know uh, like a story in itself but you know it attracts a lot of attention but we have a lot more of this thing but you know since time uh, does not allow me to to go any further and i don't want to go any further to hold you back from your lunch i think it just only you know it's a very uh, good moment. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be with you here. And the time I spend, I hope that you get something as a sharing of experience. I'm not giving you any academic or technical uh, uh, knowledge in this class, but just only I would like to share the experience of the man who have worked in, the, in this industry for 30 years and happy to work with it and proud to work for it. And I only hope that tourism industry, which is a very important industry for our country, will be something inspiring for you so that you can or you would like to love or get into this industry and help our country you know, to make or to better this industry for the benefit you know, of the whole uh, nation and also for the reputation of our country. And uh, I'm, I'm happy if I have another opportunity to share with you this uh, experience. I still have you know, uh, a lot to share with you. But nevertheless, I thank you everyone for attending and not one, no one for asleep, even though you are a bit hungry, I know. Uh, so all the respectable deans, rectors, and president emeritus, I thank you very much and all the students who attend and hope to see you again. Thank you very much. Surapon um, Suet Serni, and now um, thank you for an interesting uh, talk. And now I'd like to invite as assistant professor Dr. Harold Kraust, the dean of DPU International College of DPUAC, to give a thank you address. Good morning, everyone. Um, on behalf of uh, the Racket Pundit University, I would like to thank you, Kun Surapon Svetasreni, uh, the Governor of the Tourism Authority of Thailand, for, your, for sharing your uh, very informative and interesting and uh, entertaining insights uh, about the work that you do for the TAT. Um, if I take away some of your uh, phrases, I, I would remember something that is relevant not only to your industry, but of course to all of business, which was, you mentioned uh, adapting to change, uh, staying relevant, and managing crises, and the importance of Korean boy bands. I don't know. <laughs> no. uh, very, uh, very relevant um, phrases that were uh, a, a large part of the theme of your, um, of your presentation this morning. Um, as someone who is, in a sense, in charge of, as you mentioned, uh, 24 million tourists and a 30, a 30 billion dollar industry, one of the biggest, I imagine, in the world, one of the biggest tourism industries in the world, um, your your job, of course, must be very daunting, but uh, very, very important for this uh, for this country. So I'm I'm very sure that the or the students and indeed the staff who have gathered here this morning have found your, uh, what you have shared with them today very, very valuable. Uh, and it's always a pleasure and an honor to have a guest um, of your stature come to our campus and give the, uh, the students a speech. So uh, thank you once again. Uh, I would now like to invite uh, Professor Bunso Mwisakun, um, the the President Emeritus of, of DPU to present you um, with a token of appreciation.